Welcome to the Flying Doctor channel. This is a short video follow-up on one of the questions that came from 10 more must-know tricks and tips for Flight Simulator 2024, where one of the targets is to save you hours and get you flying as quick as possible. Oliver G. Downing asked the question, could you please talk through what's on your cursor toolbar? It looks like you've got many extra options than I have. It may be because I'm an Xbox user and or because you've got add-ons, but I'd really like to know if there's anything I'm missing on there. Thanks for your videos, mate. Well, thank you very much for responding. Uh, do be encouraged to respond with comments. I'm thinking of putting a section down in the middle of my description when I've launched a video saying corrections and hints and tips that have come from other people because there's a huge number out there. Anyway, my toolbar will now look very different from your toolbar, but don't be phased. I'm starting, as with all best descriptions, at the end, and then we'll go back to the beginning. Welcome to the Flying Doctor channel. Let's geek into it. Let's start, though, with how to call up the toolbar. It's simple. If you move your mouse to the top of the screen, you'll find that the toolbar will just drop down. There we go, and it will appear. You can also call, call the toolbar using a key combination. Uh, that's really straightforward. You need to exit out of the sim, go to settings, just type in toolbar when under the controls, uh, tool. Just tool will probably do. You can assign a key or you can assign a button on one of your controllers to toggle the toolbar. That's what I would recommend for you. Lots of options here that you can explore. You can actually increase or decrease the toolbar size and you can move it up or down on the screen. So there's lots of options here, should you wish. And let's talk about what the toolbar is. It is a collection of panels. Okay, so if you want to imagine each one of these is a panel that's working in the background that you can display. When they are displayed, they go blue. Uh, apart from, uh, well, active pause should go blue. There we are, that's gone blue. Now I've paused the sim, for example. Uh, the electronic flight blag, which is this one here, uh, doesn't go blue. I don't know why, it, it just doesn't. But anyway, uh, the easiest way of picturing this is that these panels um, cover different areas. I'll run through them quickly. So active pause, which doesn't have a separate screen. The electronic flight blag, your uh, electronic flight blag. Is that kind of, is that what you take when you're looking to do a bit of thievery on the run? Anyway, don't, sorry, it's late. The electronic flight blag, uh, the camera, uh, the control options, that's not the same as the settings, that's controls, the weather options, the air traffic control, the in-house video recorder, uh, the navigraph, and if you're in the UK, the settings and the blankety blank jet hook and pen, which is an in joke that not many people are going to go in the get in the unless you're in the UK of a certain hey, don't worry me. Anyway, so yes, these are the options. Now i I could put the um toolbars on my Microsoft Flight Simulator screen here, but I've got two other screens, which is where uh, the beauty of uh flight simulator comes to the fore. So if I, for example, display what is held on my right screen, uh, here you go. On my right hand screen here, I have got um, the weather. I have got, um, this is the views. I have my basic controls here as well, if I want to play them. And on my left hand monitor, I have got my flight bag. You can just see that there with a whole host of other things, of course. I've got my communication air traffic control here. Uh, I have got my video recorder embedded, still trying to work out what that is. And I've got my Navigraph. But here's a warning, if you leave them open, uh, you will find that they will impact the running of the sim on some uh, PCs because these stuff's all demanding in the background and uh, removing what resource could be going to the sim. So uh, you can't see me do this. Uh, but for example, whilst I'm looking on the main screen here, um, I can tweak the time of day. Uh, the time of day can increase and decrease. There we are. Uh, they give you options as you are working through the sim. So if, for example, here, um, 
you can see that I can pick an external view, which is what I'm on, or an internal view. And then I can select various views here, close up pilot's view, there we are, a landing view, a co-pilot view, an instrument view, uh, which I'll go down here, so instruments one, two, three, so all of these options are close at hand. Um, you've got an external camera uh, that you've got here and uh, you can adjust the features here, the external view, quick view one, two, three and four, um, but you can see how uh, that really adds um, sort of you know, speed to the sim and showcases the drone camera. And uh, yes, so you've got options here when you are looking here as well. Uh, free camera, camera drone, fixed camera, external one, fixed camera, external two, fixed camera. So there's a whole host of, well, you can view, you look at that. Well, I have to admit, I'm flying, you know, in uh, much better light. But uh, yes, so you can get much better views and for photographs and just recording. You can get much better views using these uh, options here. One uh, of the panels, the basic controls. Uh, this isn't uh, the... Um, settings, this is basic controls, but it lets you make basic controls on the fly and uh, so therefore you can really see, you know, I mean you need to do it in the sim and you can do it on the fly so you can see exactly what's going on. So yes, the devices list. One handy hint is if you're sat in an aircraft and you're thinking, oh, I can't remember what my general or my airplane controls and my specific controls were. If you just move to the unit that you're looking to look at, so for example, I want to remember, have, is, this, is this the configuration where I set the flaps here or the gear here? If you click search by input and just pull the button down, you'll find, for example, that that button on my, uh, my throttle is increased flaps and because I kind of know my layouts, I know that number two will be geared down. So that's just a really helpful um, hint if you're looking to find out what a button does. I don't know if you can tell, but I've changed this to snowing now. There we are, I've got a good bit of snow. Uh, final one, flight control replay. What would I be interested in using this for? I haven't really delved about in this at the moment. The electronic flight bag. I'm not going to do a full tutorial on this, but there it goes. So uh, here you can have your flight plan and uh, which I'm in at the moment and you're able to make changes literally on the fly. A huge amount of information there. You can also go to the bottom here and you can be clicking around into your settings. That, that deals with units, uh, the pilot record book, the aircraft you're in which I'm hoping that they'll add to because this I think has real use particularly around flight performance and checklists are already there for a lot of the aircraft which is great. There's no, it's, it's really easy now to sit in virtually any aircraft once you've got basic knowledge of how to fly the sim um, and the principles of flight and using the checklist you can work through a certain uh, amount certainly to different planes and uh, work out what is where. The weather always worth having a look at the weather this is really helpful as well because you can vary the weather just to give yourself more challenge so you've got real-time weather or, and uh, also got, sorry, got real time. Uh, if I switch to real time here, it all goes dark. If I switch back, it won't let me switch back in that way. You have to remember it. So I've got to drag back to whenever I was um, flying before. And that, I think I must have been flying in the morning because there it was in the morning. Uh, I can tell by uh, where the, that's the sunrise coming up. Uh, and also, you can have live weather. If I change the weather there, it's going to find the live weather um, and pipe that in uh, for me. Okay, uh, so yeah, that's uh, just a very basic to allow you to start to play with things. Uh, you can have uh, you can have uh, more clouds, for example. Well, we're in broken clouds; they don't look very broken to me. Uh, you can have clear skies. Uh, you can have few clouds. Oh, that's nice, few clouds. And uh, yeah, so there are your options you can resize this to whatever size you want but I want you to see what's going on obviously and uh, we can have a bit of rain here comes the rain again the thing is that one or two people are sort of saying I'm not seeing the rain well you know be patient guys it takes a while to invent the weather after a while I'm sure the rain will come uh, I'm not going to hang around for it but it sometimes does take a bit of a while um, to get rain and it also may well depend on your altitude as well um, but I very much doubt it in this case. Come on, where's the rain? Is it? 
There we are. It is rain on the windscreen there. I think it's rain or it's dirt. I'm not sure. There we are. It's proper rain. There we are. I can see it. Where's the rain? There we go. So it is raining. So take a little bit of uh, patience with that. Okay. And you can play about with that. Uh, we could have a light thunderstorm. Oh, and the thing is that you can uh, have a play with this and you can make, for example, your landings more challenging. Notice that in order to move them, they need to be in window mode. Okay, I will show that again uh, for you. So if you click on uh, the window, this, a window will come up so that you can operate it inside um, your main uh, monitor. But if you click on that, that will convert it to window. It happens to have moved automatically because it's remembered its position. Um, but uh, there you are. So yes, so that's uh, the weather. Um, ATC, I think, speaks for itself. Let's drag that one across the communication. And uh, there used to be an option, I don't know where it is, to have the um, co-pilot do the ATC for you when you're taking off. Uh, but you can tune in here and uh, tune into the approach of where I should have been going to, but it's been uh, way too long. Uh, but yes, your different comm channels up here and also intercom. I don't quite know how intercom works. Group is for group chat on uh, shared flights, so multiplayer flights. So eh, eh, that's uh, your communication panel. Uh, your FCR embedded panel, which is your video player effectively. I've not really played about with this, but you can record video on the fly. Now, the way I record it uh, on the fly is that I use OBS. I use an entirely separate uh, system. Um, uh, but uh, you can have an in-house uh, kind of means of recording. And uh, yeah, I'm going to have a good look at that later. And then finally, yeah, for those who use it, the Navigraph tab. Um, you can see that that's at that in there. In order to uh, use Navigraph, you've got to have a Navigraph subscription. You can see it resizing there. Uh, Navigraph is linked with Simbrief, uh, which is well, very often uh, for simmers, which is a means of planning flights and then drawing the information from Navigraph. That means that you can save flight plans. Some people find it easier to use Simbrief still and import the flight plan in, which is more than possible to do. But yes, for those using uh, Navigraph it is available within the sim. So yes, uh, that's uh, where we are at the moment. I'm just thinking about whether there's any top tips I could give you. Well, in terms of the weather, one thing I would suggest that you can do is that when you're flying in mountainous areas, you can see here, it's fairly intuitive, you can change the cloud and the wind uh, levels as well. If you click this plus button, you can get another uh, wind level and you can change uh, the wind, you can change the wind direction and the wind speed. Particularly helpful if you're flying in a mountainous area and you want to give yourself a little bit more challenge. In terms of the camera, don't forget that you can program your custom views. Uh, don't forget the shift and one through right the way through the range will get to views that are already uh, planned into the sim and you can uh, merely uh, just uh, attach those to a controller should you wish uh, but also you can record custom views as well I'll show you how to do that in the tips and tricks video I think it's tips and tricks number one uh, well well worth um, oh, I'll watch that one are you gonna come alive for me no you're not okay you're gonna let me down still a little bit buggy here in the sim let's try it again okay and uh, yes, so it's a work there. I don't know why. One of the things that this is helpful for, and I have to see, I think it's this flight control replay. Really don't know. There was an app called Flight Control Replay that worked with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. One of the things is whether you can almost certainly you'll be able to record and replay, and you'll be able to replay with a change of view, I hope. That means that you can look at the aircraft externally and you can even maybe look from a drone point of view as you replay and record and you can see things like how good your landing is. So that if this works rather like uh, flight control uh, re replay, um, which I think is what it was called, um, I think that'd be really good. I'm just interested in the configurations. Uh, there we are. No, well, we won't go there because all we're doing is introducing here. So there we are, folks. A really quick introduction to the toolbar. Um, happy flying. And do please, if you really like what you see, make sure you like, make sure you subscribe as we journey forwards. It all makes a big difference. Take care. Stay safe, folks.